Hello and welcome to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm your host, Reggie Hall. During the next half hour, we'll talk about what Farm Bureau is doing to build a solid generation ag, a future community and generation of farmers, consumers, and community leaders. We'll talk about Farm Bureau's leadership programs and the impact those programs are having on agricultural communities and the people that serve them. All that and more coming up next on Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. Years ago, when my Aunt Joan suffered a stroke, it was devastating for all of us. And although it didn't take her life, it took something so much more important to her. It took her independence. I don't ever want another family to have to go through that. The thing is, with what we can do today, a stroke doesn't have to happen. 80% of strokes can be prevented when the risk is detected early and then treated by a doctor. That's why many doctors recommend lifeline screening. We use sonograms to look inside your arteries because that's where the plaque that causes most strokes builds up. You usually can't see it or feel it, and a routine physical won't usually check for it. To schedule a lifeline screening near you, call 888-787-2873. We screen the carotid arteries, the abdominal aorta, and the peripheral arteries. It's easy, completely painless, and every screening is reviewed by a board-certified physician. Lifeline Screening offers packages of tests for just $135. Call 888-787-2873. If a screening could prevent a stroke, why wouldn't you do it? Hello and welcome back to Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm your host, Reggie Hall. We're going to be talking in this episode about building a firm foundation for Generation Ag, a future generation of farmers, consumers, and community leaders, and what Farm Bureau is doing to build a strong foundation for that generation. As Americans grow further from the farm, geographically and generationally, Farm Bureaus across the country feel a growing desire and responsibility to reach out and give a leg up to young people to help them understand and appreciate the value of domestically produced food, fiber, and fuel. Here in South Carolina, we work with preschool kids through high school and college, and as young adults, to develop leaders for tomorrow's challenging and rewarding world of agriculture. Today, each farmer produces enough food and fiber for 155 people in the United States and across the globe. Yet, just over 1% of the U.S. population lives on a farm. In general, kids today believe food is generated in the grocery store and clothes magically appear on the racks at the mall. It is Farm Bureau's goal to change those misconceptions through a myriad of programs designed to grow a more agriculturally intelligent population of consumers, farmers, and advocates. Farm Bureau embraces the current internet generation as well as millennials and Generation Xers to help them grasp the importance of working in farm-related careers, of locally grown food and fiber, and of advocating for family farmers and rural lifestyles. While the average age of U.S. farm operators is now just over 57 years old, with the number of operators 75 years and older on the rise and the number of operators under 25 years of age decreasing, many young people continue to enter agriculturally related careers. A recent survey of America's young farmers and ranchers revealed that nearly all of them plan to farm and ranch for life. In addition, 90% said they would like their children to follow in their footsteps. Nearly 30% of today's farmers and ranchers have attended college, with more than half of this group obtaining a degree. A growing number of today's farmers and ranchers with four-year college degrees are pursuing postgraduate studies in a wide range of fields. Those fields and careers related to farming are what several Farm Bureau programs try to promote, including through the Agriculture in the Classroom program, the Youth Leadership and Ambassador programs, and through the Garden Mini Grant program. The other thread that ties these programs together is that one program is strategically aligned to feed into the other. South Carolina Farm Bureau President David Winkles explains. The lifeblood of any organization is its volunteers and its leaders. And you know, as those leaders mature, then there always needs to be a new crop of leaders being cultivated 
to take those positions. Uh, that's one of the most important things that I've seen in my lifetime is to make sure that someone is there to mentor, but then to step aside and turn over the reins when the time is right. School-aged children affected by the Ag in the Classroom program or school garden mini grants will be better positioned to become participants in Farm Bureau's youth leadership program or to serve as Farm Bureau ambassadors. Those young people will be able to transition into Farm Bureau's collegiate programs and eventually into the organization's Young Farmer and Rancher program for young farmers ages 18 to 35. Stay tuned because when South Carolina's installment of Voices of Agriculture continues, we'll introduce you to some successful participants of the organization's education and leadership programs. We'll be back in a moment. Years ago, when my Aunt Joan suffered a stroke, it was devastating for all of us. And although it didn't take her life, it took something so much more important to her. It took her independence. I don't ever want another family to have to go through that. The thing is, with what we can do today, a stroke doesn't have to happen. 80% of strokes can be prevented when the risk is detected early and then treated by a doctor. That's why many doctors recommend lifeline screening. We use sonograms to look inside your arteries because that's where the plaque that causes most strokes builds up. You usually can't see it or feel it, and a routine physical won't usually check for it. To schedule a lifeline screening near you, call 888-787-2873. We screen the carotid arteries, the abdominal aorta, and the peripheral arteries. It's easy, completely painless, and every screening is reviewed by a board-certified physician. Lifeline Screening offers packages of tests for just $135. Call 888-787-2873. If a screening could prevent a stroke, why wouldn't you do it? Hello and welcome back to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm your host, Reggie Hall. We're spending this half hour talking about developing a keen generation ag, a generation of young people ages preschool through age 35 who have an appreciation for and understanding of locally grown food, fiber, and fuel, and also appreciate the number of careers involved in agriculture. One of the best ways for students to gain appreciation for locally grown food is for them to grow it themselves. That's what the Farm Bureau's young farmers and ranchers are doing through their school garden mini-grant program. The mini-grant program provides a $500 grant to winning schools in each of Farm Bureau's four districts. Teachers who apply for the grants must design a project garden geared for their students. Gardens must contain production agriculture crops like wheat, corn, oats, peanuts, fruits or vegetables. Also, projects must involve County Farm Bureau volunteer leaders as advisors or mentors. Fifth grade teacher Amber Yeomans won a grant for her school last year and saw an immediate buy-in from not only her students, but from the rest of the school. It's used in all subject areas. ELA will come out or English language arts will come out. They'll write papers, they'll write poems. We did um, an ecosystems project. We talked all about a garden ecosystem and identified all of its parts. Um, in math, we measure all the beds. The kids do scale drawings of the garden. They map out where all the plants are going to go. They have to read the packet diagrams and decide how far apart to plant the seeds and you know all of that. So math, science, social studies, we study victory gardens from World War I and World War II and they, they plant their own victory garden per se. So it's, it's school-wide, subject-wide, everything's covered. And while he didn't receive money from a mini-grant, fourth grade teacher Floyd Dinkins in a nearby county also helps his students learn through growing commodities. And for the most part, it's a first-time opportunity. As far as agriculture, we planted some peanuts at the beginning of the year last year. And they had no idea that peanuts came from the actual peanut that you eat. I don't, I don't know where they, where they thought they came from. But we, we planted those and we did the whole, you know, the, the stem coming down underground, the, the pods and all. And that was fascinating for them. But, and so they didn't have much background knowledge about agriculture at all. Dinkins is one of more than a thousand or so teachers statewide who've been through one of Farm Bureau's ever popular Ag in the Classroom workshops. He's also an adjunct education professor at the University of South Carolina, who's helping to spread the foundation of agricultural education to future teachers. I teach a science methodologies course 
And part of what I shared with them was that, um, and it, interesting it is, most of the, the students that I worked with as college students had didn't understand agriculture as well easy. Again, generations being removed from the farm. So when I did the activities with them that I learned about ag in the classroom and that I'd done with my third graders, they were really appreciative of, of getting a background understanding, which they would need in order to teach, you know, because they'll be teaching next year, as a matter of fact. Agriculture in the Classroom is a 501c3 nonprofit organization sponsored by the South Carolina Farm Bureau. The program, directed by 28-year veteran classroom teacher Vonnie Knight, promotes the awareness of the importance of domestically produced food, fiber, and fuel through no-cost materials for teachers, professional development workshops, and Farm Bureau member volunteer support. With information that can be used through several grades that they can use for other information as they're studying, you know, Native Americans or whatever the case might be. But we have um, numerous other resources that I distribute through workshops that I do them on school levels and um, just constantly providing. We also have a volunteer um, resource for them. Our women's committee and our young farmer and ranchers do a fantastic job going into the classroom and sharing activities and other information with the teachers as well and I express all that in institute and in workshops and they can call on it. For example, if you are studying soybeans and you want your students to actually see and touch a real soybean, then we have ways that we can gladly have that delivered to their school. The nucleus of South Carolina's Ag in the Classroom program is the week-long annual Summer Teacher Institute designed for 50 public or private school classroom teachers of grades pre-K through 8th. In exchange for about $200 in registration fees, attending teachers earn three hours of graduate credit used for teacher recertification and receive free room and board, meals, and two days of farm tours. Plus, they get to take home bushels of classroom support materials and lesson plans specifically designed for their grade levels. Fifth grade teacher Janelle Ingram was a student in the 2012 Summer Institute. While she walked away from the program enlightened about South Carolina agriculture, she also learned new teaching methods and skills. You're learning about agriculture, but you're also learning about teaching because we have some, like the True Colors episode that we did, which teaches you know how different people learn and how what you can do differently in your classroom to reach every learning style. Um, and maybe what those, what's difficult for those students if you're this kind, if you're this color teacher that you normally teach this way. We did a lot of hands-on activities in groups, which was a lot of fun. We made a commercial, and you, you know, you see this group do it, and you go, okay, well, we got to change this real quick. And I mean, it's just a ton of fun, and you, and just meeting all the other teachers that are there with you, um, and their resources, and then you, you know, let me know how this works in your class, and and stuff like that. So it was very interesting. Ingram brought home a number of resources she plans to use in her classroom this year and also share with other teachers at the school. Each of the Ag in the Classroom lesson plans are aligned to the state curriculum standards, which makes their implementation an easy choice for teachers who have little time for competing programs and promotions. As a teacher, I know that time we do not have um, enough of and that we need to put it in their hands ready to use. So aligning everything with the state standards and making it as easy as possible for them is my main challenge and ultimate mission. And there's not a subject where agriculture can't be used as an example, including civics. Floyd Dinkins' class learned a real world example of that last year when they took agriculture to City Hall. My students actually take upon themselves to write letters to the mayor um, of Casey and to city council, and they actually drafted a proposal, an ordinance that allows chickens up to four hens in Casey. Mm -hmm. And one of my students, I mean, I went to the, the public hearing, and one of my students went and spoke at the public hearing as well. So I mean, just trying to get them involved in, in home agriculture as, as much as possible. So I don't know if any of them actually end up getting chickens, right. but now the options there at least for, for Casey residents if they want to. Growing Generation Ag, that's the topic of this installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. Stay tuned because when we come back, we'll introduce you to more young farmers who are committed to a bright future of farming in South Carolina.
Hello and welcome back to Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm your host, Reggie Hall, with the South Carolina Farm Bureau Federation. We're talking about building a strong generation ag, a community of knowledgeable farmers, consumers, and community leaders who understand and appreciate locally grown food, fiber, and fuel. Two programs through which we try to accomplish that goal are the annual Youth Leadership Conference and Youth Ambassador Scholarship Program, both sponsored by the Farm Bureau Women's Leadership Committee and coordinated by Faith Laramore. Both public, private, and homeschool students are all a part of that program. On even number years, we focus on agriculture and state government. On odd number years, we focus on ag marketing and promotions. And we hope that they learn more about agriculture and learn about the careers available to them in agriculture. And whether or not they select a career in agriculture, we just hope that they understand the importance of agriculture on their everyday lives as they grow up and become consumers and, and voting citizens. The annual Youth Leadership Conference is a residential program held on a local college campus for rising high school juniors and seniors. That's where we caught up with Ansley Judy and Spencer Owens. We learned about government skills and the Senate and how the House works. We also took a trip to the State House in Columbia, which was very enjoyable. And we're also learning about great leadership skills and how to be a leader. Our lives are connected with agriculture on what we eat and uh, what we see on TV. I mean, it's, I mean, it's in real life, so it's very important. Farm Bureau's Youth Ambassador Scholarship Program is designed to find young people who can use the advantages of their youth to tell the farm story to audiences who may not otherwise hear it, and to spread the message that interest in agriculture as a career are alive and well. Allie Jant and Robert Clifton are the organization's Youth Ambassadors for 2012. Each says the $2,000 scholarship money is well worth the effort. By being involved in the Farm Bureau, I've learned a lot about how we need to help bring agriculture into the legislative pro programs, especially since agriculture is always going to be here. Uh, you'll come to find that agriculture is a really vital part of our economy and uh, of society. Um, there is no culture without agriculture. The Youth Leadership Conference and Ambassador Programs are designed to train leaders who will grow up through the ranks of Farm Bureau's grassroots programs. Emmanuel Bankston attended the Youth Leadership Program, was selected as a state ambassador for agriculture, and now sits on Farm Bureau's statewide Young Farmer and Rancher Committee. He knows just how vast the Farm Bureau organization is. Farm Bureau's everywhere, and I know there's somebody out there out there working for me and, and working for other farmers who aren't even Farm Bureau members. And um, as well as gaining that leadership experience, being on the Young Farmer and Rancher Committee, and working with other farmers around the state and young farmers around the state, it's, it's very good for, for building those, for building future leaders. Allison Hunia was the organization's first female youth ambassador, who also used her experiences as a youth to gain leadership opportunities within Farm Bureau. And while she spends her work days now as a nurse practitioner, Allison stays involved in Farm Bureau as the chair of her county's women's leadership committee, and she is on the state young farmer and rancher committee. It's so much more than just a scholarship, and it's not like you're going to have to commit, you know, 100% of your time. Everybody understands that you're in school and that's the priority, but I think that it just, I mean, you get to do so many things that you probably wouldn't get to do on as personal of a level if you weren't, you know, selected for something like this. Growing Generation Ag. That's the topic of this installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. Stay tuned because when we come back, we'll introduce you to more young farmers who are committed to a bright future of farming in South Carolina. Hello and welcome back to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. We've been sharing the story of building Generation Ag, building a knowledgeable community of farmers, consumers, and future community leaders who understand and appreciate farming and rural lifestyles. Within the feeder system of South Carolina Farm Bureau's Leadership Development for Young People, 
is the Young Farmer and Rancher program, which is open to men and women ages 18 to 35. The program offers opportunities for leadership development, legislative awareness, continuing education, networking, and involvement within the Farm Bureau grassroots organization. Participants have opportunities to showcase their businesses, farming, and speaking skills through a series of competitive events. There's a collegiate and young farmer discussion meet designed to mimic a county board or committee meeting where participants are ranked on their participation and knowledge of farming issues. There's an excellence in agriculture competition designed for people who may not own their own farming operation. Participants are judged on their involvement in agriculture, their leadership abilities, and their involvement in Farm Bureau and community civic organizations. Then there's the Achievement Award competition, similar in nature to the Excellence in Ag competition, except the participants must be full-time farmers. Judging for this award is much more extensive and involves an on-farm visit by a panel of judges. Farm Bureau has learned through the years that participants in these highly competitive contests produce lifelong advocates for agriculture and for Farm Bureau. Lonnie Reichert won the South Carolina Farm Bureau discussion meet and went on to place as a finalist in the American Farm Bureau National Competition. Having the ability or the chance to discuss with other people and meet with other people and work issues out and giving us, as far as our farm is concerned, it's given us a place you know, to speak our voice, you know, to get our story out. And um, if there's issues that come up, Farm Bureau allows us to, to go to the table and fight for what's right, you know, for what we believe in. Bo Norris, a row crop farmer, turkey grower, and cow-calf operator, won the state's achievement award after entering several times and placing as a finalist. His determination paid off and the process gave him something by which he could measure his farm's successes. You know, the first one we had a list of goals and then by the second time we entered we had accomplished those and had new goals and then the last time we entered it we had accomplished all those past goals and had new goals. And so it was good to look back and see that you were stair-stepping and going in the way you wanted to go in your operation. As a 21st century member of Farm Bureau, Norris has quickly come to realize the power of the Farm Bureau organization and especially the Young Farmer and Rancher program. And a whole state standing behind you, helping you fight for something you want instead of just you by yourself. Uh, that, that was one of the biggest things. As I've seen the wife and our program grow to where it's a true leadership development program where we've done media training, we've done um, legislative training, we're having our wife and our members give media interviews, we're having them testify uh, to members of Congress, whether it's at the State House or whether it's in Washington. Um, our wife and our members are active members of our legislative contact program. They're staying on top of policy issues and um, making sure that their voices are heard. They've also taken a, a big role in social media and using social media to educate consumers and um, citizens all across South Carolina and the United States about the importance of agriculture. Well, there you have it, South Carolina Farm Bureau's efforts to build a strong generation ag, a future community of farmers, consumers, and community leaders who understand and appreciate the value of locally grown food, fiber, and fuel, and appreciate the work of family farmers and rural lifestyles. If you don't know people like that in your state, I invite you to become involved in your Farm Bureau. If you're not a member, please join. You can join online in South Carolina at scfb.org. We'd love to have you as part of our family. If you're on Facebook, please like us, South Carolina Farm Bureau Federation, or follow us on Twitter. Well, that's all the time we have for this installment from South Carolina of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. Thanks for watching.